Thank you, and good afternoon. Um, today I'll tell you a story. Uh, it's 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 a love story, right? It's it's a true story, uh, and it's a story between open source and proprietary source software, uh, and the and which we think it you know does have a happy ending. And the the narrators of the story it uh, will be Pano, that'll be me. Gopi, that's the gentleman there, which is, you know, if you've got any questions later, you ask him, not me, right? Uh, and Mike, which uh, wasn't able to make it, then, uh, well, I'm sure he's watching us from home. Hi, Mike. Uh, right, so I'll start with some background, uh, what was happening in around, you know, 2015. So we had uh, a product that uh, we had the server and the client software, right? And it was a network manager, which was Oracle-based, and it was an LRS engine. Uh, so how many of you know things about LRS, linear reference system? Not you, Seth. No, apart from you. Right, okay, so, right, okay, good. Um, and then we had the client, which was a special, you know, special data manager, it was called, uh, and it was an ArcMap 9 extension, and it was desktop. And so before I go, well, that's why I asked you about LRS. Uh, I'll just you know, briefly background what an LRS is. So it stands for Linear Referencing System, uh, and it's a method of locating something uh, along a, a linear element, okay? Usually from a known start point. And in our case, in roads, the linear element was invariably you know, a piece of the road, and the event can be anything that's on that road. And events can be physical items like you know, signposts, like you know, safety fences, all of that, a, char a, char a road characteristic, uh, like you know, speed limits, or it can be like any, a, tri a true event like, you know, like a traffic accident. So the location, that's like LRS 101, location is the distance between the start point and the event. Okay, and in a graphic sort of way, you know, this is a small road, and it starts usually here with an intersection, and it ends there, another intersection, and it has a name, that's what's the way that we model it within the system, and it has a name or code, and it has a length, okay? Which means then, that if a signpost is 1.8 miles along that road, a 1, 2, 3, it's around here, okay? And there's a computing process used to locate items along you know, linear networks, and it's called dynamic segmentation. I'm just mentioning it here. You don't really care. But usually, you locate things along routes or routes for the Americans or some Americans. Anyway, and so which is are made up of lots of different segments, okay, that, that those, uh, of roads and intersections. And that may, and that's where the, the, the modeling sort of challenges start, is that they may not start at zero. No, it's okay. Uh, might not start at zero or at the end or start of the intersections that may overlap or may have gaps, okay? Or may be circular, which means that you don't know where the start is, okay, if you want to locate some start or end, okay? And events may also be located not just from the start of a route, but also from other events, okay? So this is what we have two different linear location methods rather than systems. And sometimes they're used in the LRM, LRS, are used interchangeably. Again, not some, something that you need to worry. But also, another challenge is what happens when you have all your mile posts, you know, at the correct mileage, and then, you know, there's a road realignment and a new housing state is built, and then all your, your, uh, your mile posts are just wrong, okay? Now, our LRS engine, our LRS engine will, it was dealing, you know, deals with all that, okay, and and more to that. Like, you can handle any network. Got a flexible network model. It's not just for roads. You can have like rails. You can have like uh, water, uh, water networks. You can support multiple LRSs. It, you can have, you know, it's user configurable at name and attribution, so you can name your network and, you know, you can use any name convention that you want. And you can also model the datums, which is the smallest unit on the network, but also datums, linear chain datums that make up routes or uh, non-linear, sort of just a bunch of buckets of, of, of datums or even um, that you make a group or even a group of groups. So you, just may have, you can have like admin type groupings. Okay, you can also have temporal management, you know, the full network history is maintained, 
uh, you you don't delete things in our system. Nothing gets deleted. Just end dated, and you can so which means that you can undo edits at any time. Okay, and it supports all the circular routes, the Gaussian routes. And another thing that that separates from from other other like software is that it's a logical first approach. So it's the logical model that. Uh, that we deal with mainly, and also it has a geometry as an attribute. So we just deal it. The geometry is just an attribute of the network, rather than what defines the network. And that's make it really, really fast. So it was all good, but we had you know problems. The UI, okay, it was a desktop. It was dependent on Esri technology, and you know interoperability in general was was an issue. So what we wanted was to be web based. Uh, and to be open, as in open data, open standards, and to remove any Esri dependencies. So this guy comes along and he says, like, you know, what if I told you? Well, he didn't do that, but, you know, it's, he could have. But, you know, but basically we discovered open source, right? We discovered and that was the love at first sight thing. And because we used you know, open layers, and we use open layers where we switch to OL3 immediately after release, and we're currently working on uh, working with uh, open layers four, and we're looking to move to open layers five, and we also use map server. So th those are the main two components, if you like, you know, the force 4G components that we use. So open layers and map server, and uh, it's we use of server side, you know, special publishing. I've got this this item here, which I think I've put it on, on a different on a, another uh, presentation I did. You know why do you didn't use GeoServer? Uh, because we didn't know enough Java, right? And it was a Java thing. Well, mainly one of the reasons. Also, it's it's quite you know it's it's more heavy. It has, to, it has its own login system and all that. But you know that's it. That's all I know. No one shoots me down, right? Okay. So, but you know, but also you know, Bentley is basically you know, a map server. You can use C sharp uh, interfaces, and Bentley is usually it's it's mainly a, a Microsoft shop, okay. And with map server, we used uh, dynamically generate map files, and I'll explain this next slides what I mean by that. So, and this is the the architecture in a, in a sort of in a very high level architecture. So, you know, on the left hand side, can I use that? Maybe not. Okay, but on the left-hand side, you can you can see you know your client, client browser. We've got open layers. We started with using Angular. Now we're moving slowly to React JS. We got a sort of you know a, a, a React JS uh, wrapper against Angular. You know we'll move full Angular eventually. Then in middle tier, we got the application. Which I mean, it's classic you know three tier architecture. You got the web API at the bottom. You got you know the map server that will create the map files you know from the database server. And it's mainly Oracle, as I said, but we're looking at migrating as well to uh, SQL Server as well, Microsoft. And so what do I mean by dynamically generated map files? Because we're Oracle, and that's one of the things that we want to get move away from as well. This is Java. We don't like Java. Um, it's, we started with Map Builder. So Map Builder is, just, is, is an Oracle Java application that all the Oracle special tables you, they have you know, special metadata tables in Oracle uh, where you can set styles and labeling and all that sort of thing. And then, so once you have that, then we have like a conversion mechanism, if you like. So as soon as the user logs in, and because we got also this uh, you know, uh, role-based security, basically creates a map file for each user dynamically. So that's what the dynamically generate map file means, okay? Uh, and you know, one of the reasons we want to get away from that is that now we we're using. Obviously, we can display Oracle, you know, special tables as layers. Uh, but in order to get you know shape files and anything else that that, that map server supports, we have like you know config files. You know that you say, okay, I got this shape file and I got this rusted data and I got this background maps, and we want to get away from all that. And. So basically, again, what you know, says when when you log in to a PL SQL API, it's you know it, it it reads the map file, the map build, the map definition, the tables, and then it combined with a you know custom Bentley layer metadata, uh, and then allows implementation for all base security. And what we also did, you got you know because you got views, you can you can have you know implementation of temporal views. So you know it's not just what the user can see, but we'll see only active data because everything else will be end dated. 
uh, and we also use you know runtime substitution variables within the map file so we can use we had like you know quite a clever thing doing about you know having uh, lateral offsets which basically offset linear linear offset uh, event data of the route okay map server file People are aware of map, you know, map file, map server, what they are. Yeah, okay, not you, Seth, again. But, you know, it's a map server file, just an ASCII file that contains definitions of, for the map container extent. It's a very, very sort of, you know, uh, again, uh, super simplified view. Uh, so you got the map container extends, then you, got, you can define the symbols, the layers, and all that. And it looks so, the generate map file looks something like that. Okay, so you can see that, that that you know, we got the web metadata and all the WMS requests, the WMS WFS request, and that's what a layer looks like. Okay, and you can see that it has like your your normal what you see the WMS metadata kind of uh, keywords, but also some of our own keywords. Okay, so this is and, and remember again, this is a map file per user. Okay, which gets deleted afterwards and, and whatever. So you know, it, it knows exactly, so if it's editable, that for another user might not be editable and all that. So we, you know, we get everything, all the business logic within the map file as well. Okay. So some of the things that we had to change and do with, with, with map server. Uh, the first thing that, that, you know, well, they told me that, you know, we need stronger encryption in map server. So because that MS encrypt, you know, was not secure enough. Uh, so what we did, and this is Windows only, we had a new um, build of map server where we used the data protection API, DB API, if anyone knows about it. Uh, and that, this is a, from a fork map server, and I think actually this one has been uh, committed back to the, so I'm not sure, but you know, it's, it's there on the repositories. Um, the other thing is, we're Bentley, right? Uh, we're Bentley, and we're supposed to be like the DGN guys that, that you know, we can deal with DGN. Problem was, Map Server wasn't supporting DGN V8, the latest DGN format, okay? That oh, was a bit embarrassing. So, you know, we're also about to v V7. So what we did, we used, because it was easy for us, we used a proprietary Tiger libraries, again, within a build, a custom build of Map Server, okay? And now we can support our own format, which is great. Um, Another thing we, we did, and that was open layers mainly, and with maps, I'm not sure if it's a map server problem, WFS problem, all that, but basically what we wanted, you know, it's a linear referencing system, so, you know, you click somewhere and you just want to see the offset, you know, the measure value along that line, right? So, the problem was that the, and, and when you do that, the, the layer is a W, it's, it's a, a JSON or a GML layer, it's vector data, right? The problem was that, that the coordinates that we're getting back were just XYs, never Ms. Map server would just never get either as a JSON or GML wouldn't get the M values. Um, so what we did is like every time you click on it, and it's actually quite quick. You know, I thought at first it won't quit, but you know, copy did it. Uh, we fetch you know measures from the so as soon as you click, you got the X Ys, and then you just go back to the database and get the measure value. Okay. I'll show you some examples as well. Uh, the other thing that we used to do is. Uh, we want we want to trace, so we create new networks, right? Uh, new pieces of network, and sometimes invariably you want to have, you know, you got your shape file or something else that you, you know, put on 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 your map, and then you want to trace along that shape file, right? Uh, the problem was with open layers, the snapping agents and the draw agents and whatever, you know, they didn't support interactions, you know, the tracing um, until at the first vertex I will see, not the whole geometry, okay? So what we had to do is have you know custom draw method that we also call private. I know it's a bad thing this, but sorry guys. You know it's a, we call private methods, private open layers methods. And so you end up with this, right? You can see that the, you know the, the mouse goes up, up and down, doesn't you know it gets locked onto that element, right? And then as soon as you go back and forth, you can see you go from here. You can click there, and it will just go there, right? And then you can go. Yeah, it gets locked, it goes through here, and it, and it will just automatically get the trace and then all oh, return back. Okay, so those are the, you know, showing because I think that's quite cool things. Um, and, you know, one of the other sort of small things is again, shape files, we, you know, to add the shape file, you shaped JSON uh, format, that wasn't supporting polyline 
M values again. So we just did a small change. That was the whole thing and a great thing. And that's, I think that's why our developers loved the open source stuff because they can actually have the problem, you know, we'll just go in and fix it. Okay. So, and that's what it looks like. I thought I won't do a video or, you know, I'll just show you some, some, some screenshots. So this is what the AW asset wise linear referencing service you can see at the bottom, uh, sorry, the, the top left uh, is. So, this is what it looks like. This is your catalog where you got all your different map layers, and you can see you got you know sign risk like like an asset, and you got the parking another asset, linear asset, and then you got the federal functional class, and you get all the symbology that if you remember that comes from uh, map builder all through to you know map server and you know, the map file. Okay, um, so you have all different layers there as well as background layers. Now. We the whole editing stuff because there's a okay the, the whole editing stuff is is just um, uh, it's like a start editing stop editing so I have clicked on start editing as when I did uh, I did the start editing it goes and has got the stop editing now it will download it will allow it, it will ask me which layer do I want to uh, to edit this uh, I th yeah this is the datum layer it will download this vector data. And then you got that, that cool little radial menu, which is context sensitive depending on the layer that you're editing. Okay, so it will be a different radial menu if it's an asset, if it's an event. Okay, and this is just like you know advanced search, you know how you can uh, do an advanced search on a, a, a layer type as well as on the network. So I won't find sign bridges that you know sign bridges that equals butterfly along that network. Okay. Very quickly, then what's ahead? A lot of things are ahead, but you know what would might interest you is that we're trying to do a map server configuration tool. As I said in the beginning, we want to deprecate map builder, you know, the Oracle sort of Java stuff uh, that can be used across all our apps. And basically, it's another map server, you know, yet and again another map file configuration sort of you know editor, but mainly for our our purposes. And it would look. This is just the screenshots. It would look something like this. Okay, so we can have your map, and you got all your layers for your map, uh, and then for each layer, you can have you know the basic, the layer name, transparency, blah blah, blah the labeling, the symbology. You can see there, and but it w that at the end of the day will will go and and add um, entries to tables, right? And and then the application, any application, can come and create the the map file. Um, so just labeling what it look like, and you can always like you know just use uh, map map file expressions, and that's what the the a class definition would look like. Okay, again, very much work in progress, but you know this is the mockups basically that the developers are working out of. And I think that's that. Questions to Gopi. <laughs> Thank you. That was good on time, wasn't it? Yeah. At some point, I think it was around l uh, slide 25 or so. Uh, y yeah, because <laughs> I noticed. Um, you said that you had to use a, a restricted license uh, plugin for Map Server because oh, they yeah, didn't. The VPN, yeah, the, the yes. Yeah. Did you consider instead of using that extend the the current uh, support so the the Map Server supports uh, yeah. version eight? Yeah. Yes, we did consider that. We're still considering this. The thing is that, as like always, we need it now. And the easiest thing was like get the library in and you know just do it. But yes, we we, we are considering. I mean, you know, yeah, we already have put you know things in Map Server. Sort of, you know, we have done some some enhanced to Map Server core. Maybe that you know once they have time, they'll do the next thing. You know, it will be this. You said you want to move away from Oracle towards MySQL or MS SQL. Are you considering Postgres, Postgres as well, or is there any reason for uh, doing only MS SQL? Thank you. Or even MySQL special. MySQL. MySQL, yeah. Well, look. Um, no, we're not. We have considered the post, you know, Postgres as well. That we, the thing is, we do not want to to deprecate Oracle. We want to deprecate Oracle Map Builder. We won't deprecate Oracle anyway, because we we already got a lot of users that are using Oracle, Oracle Enterprise. They got a lot of APIs and things that you know work on. But the other things that our users have, and you know, 
uh, at least DOTs and big sort of you know highways agencies is SQL Server. None of them has a Postgres, or we never been asked to do Postgres. So yeah, no. Yes, yes. Anyone else? We're good on time, so we can take more questions. So, anybody? Yep. No, it's an, e it's an easy one. Um, you said about um, when you have the linear referencing and you have the history and you have something changing. Um, how are you storing the history? Is it using uh, Oracle table versioning? And are you going to do the same thing in, in MS SQL Server? Or is it your own custom tables for history? It's custom tables history. It's, it's basically anything. If you, if you end date something, you get a new copy of that, and then the other thing will get, gets end dated. No more questions? So in that case, we will wait a few minutes for the next talk. And thank you very much.